Three, two, one. Good everyone, Garage King here, and today we have a 2008 BMW 325. That's an E90 model, and it's got a trouble code. P0302, so a cylinder two misfire. Now the E90 was produced from 2006 to 2011, and what we're gonna do to see what the problem is, is we're gonna swap out the number one and the number two coils. Now you saw me showing the tools there. Now this is just a five millimeter hex or five millimeter Allen key. That's all this, uh, that's all, that's all that's really needed for this job. But you're probably wondering what the heck I'm doing with these three Allen keys, and I'll tell you what. To get the back or the rear bolt, on the driver's side, you need a really, really shallow Allen key because a ratchet I find is just too big to get there. So you can see here, I have a shallow Allen key. Now, if you don't have a really shallow Allen key, you know what, just get a cheap five, miller, five millimeter Allen key and you know what, grind it down, it'll work. We can get the really small ratchet on the one side, but on the other side, we are going to need to use one of these Allen keys. So let's take a look and see how it's done. You can see here, here is my short Allen key and I'm reaching in the back here. Now, if you are a bit of a Popeye or you got massive arms, I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know if this is gonna be able to work for you. Uh, not saying I'm a Popeye, I got fair size arms, but I was able to make it work, uh, but it is quite tight. And there you go, you can see, I was able to get the bolt out. Now on the other side here, I used a quarter drive flex ratchet and I found that was much easier than trying to use an Allen key. And the reason for that is the flex drive ratchet provided uh, me with some angle so I was able to loosen the bolt and break it free. And there you can see, there's a good shot of uh, how it looks in there. So the angle provided by the ratchet was really, really helpful. But if you don't have one, I'm sure you can use an Allen key, but you might have to get a little bit longer. It's just the way it works uh, back here. Now, once it was loose, I came into a problem with my ratchet. It just kept turning the bolt back and forth. So now I have this tool here, because the bolt's loose. I just need to spin it out. And it's a little bit too tight for me to grab the socket. So I have this thing I can just clip on and it provides me with some leverage. So now what I can do is I can just spin it out by hand and that seems to be, at least that's the best way that worked for me. I didn't have to take anything off. Now take a look at this. Just by removing those four bolts, I'm able to wiggle the top cover just like this where I can get access to the number one, number two, and if I needed to, I would say the number three. Now you can see these electrical clips don't even require any special tools. You just pop it up and then you can just pull the wiring harness out there. You can see I lifted the top, it pushes the wiring harness back. You just give it a little bit of a wiggle and just pull them out just like that. Now to take the actual coil itself out, a little bit of a wiggle, you pull it out and that's it. They come out just like that. So let's swap the number one and number two coils around. Now it's important when you're doing this type of a job, you don't pull them both out at the same time and lay them on the bench because you're gonna forget which one is number one and which one's number two. So pull one out and sort of lay it to the side and then pull the other one out and put it directly into the other cylinder. This way you don't put them both on the bench at the same time and you know what? You may wind up putting them back in the same places that they were originally in and you're gonna be scratching your head. So you definitely don't want that to happen. Now, the other thing I should mention is you definitely wanna have a good connection and you'll be able to see by this one here, I've turned the cover down and the harness was not not plugged back in. So you can actually turn the harnesses down on this without getting them plugged right back in. Now you can see number two is correct there. You can see there's a very, very small gap. But if you look back at number one, you can see, look at this gap, it is too big. So what I have to do is lift the cover, give it a little snug push there, there you go, and then just make sure it is fully seated. That's really, really important because you wanna make sure that you have a good connection or it's just not gonna work and you're gonna be throwing more trouble codes. And you know what, surprisingly enough, there's just nothing bolting those uh, coil packs down. So yeah, they're just uh, sort of push them in place and leave them there, they're supposed to stay. Once you're done with that, arrange your plastic cover just like I did, line up the holes, put the bolts in. What I do when I put the bolts in is I don't snug them up all the way, just kind of loose by hand because this way it allows for just some last minute adjustments if you have to. Once you get all the bolts in and you know nothing is cross threaded, then you can take your tool and you could torque it down. Now after I did that, I ran the car and yes, the, the check engine light appeared back, but it was for the other cylinder, so I knew it was a coil. So with just these few simple tools here, I was able to diagnose this E90 coil. You know, all it took was a few hours of my time on Saturday and I was able to save a few bucks. So you know what, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, leave them below. And that's it, see you next week.